Um, hi, I'm Rahul from University of Toronto, and this work is a collaboration with my colleagues, um, with Wilmot Lee, uh, Danny Kaufman, and Rubeth Habib from Adobe, and my advisor, Karan Singh from U of T. Uh, so Magical Hands is about using hand gestures to author animations in virtual reality. Imagine that you want to create this animation in VR. How will you create this highly constrained and three-dimensional path of the airplane, rotate it in just the right way, and create all these fire effects at the same time? Let's consider the motion of something like the airplane first before fire. If you want to create such paths in current VR animation tools, such as Oculus Quill, the way you would move and rotate and pose an object is using widgets, where, which are very similar to what you see in desktop-based tools such as Maya. And that's not super intuitive. It's not really using VR as much as it could. What we would like to be able to do is something like this. Just pick up the object with your hand and move it in 3D space. So we want direct control of individual objects, such as airplanes. Let's now think about the fire effects, or what if you want smoke behind the airplane? Um, again, coming back to Quill, you don't have such high-level tools such as particle systems, which allow controlling the physics of such phenomena. So you'd end up tediously creating each particle as a separate object. What we would like to do instead is to treat these semantically similar and interrelated entities in a bulk. Wouldn't it be cool if you could just use your hands to define what the emission looks like and impact all particles together? If you wanted to change the shape of the particle, you could just drag and drop the new shape into an emitter. And this sort of ties into the intuitive notion of impacting these related particles in a bulk. And the fine-grained motion is controlled by some procedural or physical rules. And the way we would like to control these animations is using media hand gestures. Why? The reason we want to use gestures is because the human hand is an extremely versatile tool with a large number of degrees of freedom, and hand gestures can be very expressive. Um, when I started this project, this was during an internship at Adobe, we set out to create a gesture-based animation tool. But we soon realized that it's not immediately obvious how one would map hand gestures to animation operations. We did not know about the human preferences for media gestures, especially for the use of animation. And while there's a lot of work on hand gestures, even on media gestures, there's no work which tries to understand user preference for animation authoring using gestures. The computer graphics community has also explored the use of gestures for specific animation tasks, but none had looked at animation in a general setting. Even the specific scenarios are always focused on character animation or on facial animation. Um, even outside of the research uh, community, there's a lot of interest in using gestures, and we can expect this trend to continue with upcoming gesture recognizer in hardware such as the HoloLens 2 and others as well. But these are design explorations, and a principled exploration of gesture design for VR animation was lacking. Okay, to summarize, there was no work that we know of, of uh, which explored the use of gestures for physically based animation. Given the complex spatiotemporal controls and hierarchical relationships between objects in animation, we decided to perform a gesture elicitation study. The idea, this idea of participatory design by eliciting gestures directly from the users, was introduced by Wobrock and colleagues in 2009. Um, it has been very popular in the community. And the idea behind gesture elicitation studies is to understand user preferences for mapping gestures to operations. In our study, the participants were professional animators. Since we wanted to build a tool for animators, it made sense to us to involve them in the formative design phase as well. The study design looked something like this. The participant donned an Oculus Rift headset, which also had a leap motion uh, had a sensor mounted on it. The leap motion sensor allows participants to see their hands while they are in VR. We played an animation clip in front of them, something like this and ask them for step-by-step -step instructions for creating the clip. From this data, we try to understand both the common operations that are useful in VR-based animation authoring and the gestures that should be used to effectuate those operations. For the study, we chose a total of six different animation scenarios, and for each of those, we showed three or four clips in order of increasing complexity. For example, we had this tornado scene. Uh, we first showed this clip, and ask for the operations and associated gestures. It's a very simple rotation. Um, then we moved on to the second clip, which added a path along which the tornado moves, which is a 3D curved path um, as well. And then we added this follow-through effect with the tornado bending in the beginning and towards the end of its path. The six scenarios that we chose had a lot of variety, and we tried to cover different kinds of dynamic physical effects 
Other than a tornado, we showed a classic bouncing ball scene. Uh, we showed a rigid body interaction scene, a discrete particle system, a sheet or cloth simulation with topological changes, and a fluid simulation. We saw some very interesting gestures uh, from the professional animators trying to control a number of parameters simultaneously. Uh, here, for example, the participant is trying to specify the overall emission direction, how much the smoke, smoke spreads out, and the amount of randomness or turbulence in the flow as well. Some manipulations were more direct, trying to physically bend an object as in the real world. Others tried to sculpt the shape of the object that was being controlled. And some gestures utilize more abstract demonstration to guide a large number of objects simultaneously. Uh, from the study, we were able to create a list of common operations and gestures for VR animation. Um, here's a list of some of those important operations and gestures that we observed, uh, but the paper has more details on this. We also identified the operations where the use of widgets was preferred over gestural interactions. Uh, we also categorized the observed interactions into four different taxonomies, and the details again are in the paper. Um, finally, we concentrated all the observations into a set of succinct design guidelines for VR-based animation tools. Let's look at some of those guidelines in more detail. So first, we noticed that participants generally did not encode information in the nuances of handshape. For example, if, if they wanted to make something like a pinch pose, it does not matter where exactly their other fingers are. So slight changes in the hand pose did not really carry meaning. Even coarse pose recognition, as a result, can be, used for, uh, can be very useful for building a gestural interface for animation. Another observation was the use of gestures, which were very context dependent. For example, abstract gestures such as moving the hand left or right were used to manipulate the values of many different continuous parameters. Uh, for particle systems, this could be something like the emission density, how many particles are being released. Um, for a spring's motion, this could be something like the frequency of vibrations, and so on. So a lot of gestures can be contextualized to reduce the mental load on users and to improve recognition accuracy as well. Um, next, we noticed that in virtual reality, participants were directly interacting with objects and had an implicit expectation of physics, such as uh, elastic deformations, and other behavior as well, such as gravity and collisions. So it may be a very good idea to have a default physics engine which handles these operations until the user desires otherwise, because animators always want to go uh, against physics as well sometimes. Okay, so while implementing many of these guidelines remains as future work, and we hope this is helpful for others, we implemented some of these to build a prototype animation tool, which we also call Magical Hands. So there's a slight abuse of notation here. Um, in this prototype tool, we focused on direct manipulations, uh, such as directly translating or rotating an object, and on the control of particle systems. For this task, we built eight gestures, which I'll go through in a bit, one by one. We also built a UI panel with non-gestural widgets for timeline control. Um, and as I mentioned during the design guidelines, we can build a gestural system using coarse pose recognition. And to demonstrate, the, demonstrate this, we implemented the system using the Oculus Touch controllers uh, as the pose recognition technology. And the controller only detects if your fingers are touching certain buttons or pressing those. So this is very coarse information. We use this to infer four different hand poses. Let's look at the direct manipulation gestures first. Uh, we built a one-handed translation gesture where you just take and move an object. Um, a bimanual gesture with the two hands moving symmetrically to scale uh, an object uniformly. And a rotation gesture where one hand formed an axis and the other controlled the amount of rotation that the object goes through. Let me employ this airplane example again to see how this works. Um, you can see the use of the translation gesture to define the path of the airplane. Uh, in 3D, as so. Then the user utilized the rotation gesture to keyframe its orientation. And one thing you can notice here is that we can use performance-based as well as keyframe-based animation in a single coherent interface over here. And finally, the user was able to produce this result. Okay, let's look at particle emitters now. Uh, for emitters, we defined a unified gesture which controlled the emission curve the spread of the emission, as well as the speed. This follows, again, from our guidelines of using physics. The user defines the properties of the particle system as a bulk, and individual particles simply follow a physical or a parameterized trajectory. We also defined a tap-to-select gesture, which implements the design guideline for contextual gestures. 
In our prototype, we only had contextual gestures with particle systems, but one can imagine using contextual gestures in more complex settings, as well as to reduce the ambiguities in gestural recognition. So when you do the tap gesture, it, it enables certain contextual gestures of particle systems, and the ones we implemented are these three. First, the noise gesture adds randomness to the particle motion, if you do this. Um, the spiral motion gesture makes the particle swirl about the emission axis. And finally, users can just drag and drop an object into an emitter to make, it, make the dropped object the new particle shape for this system. Let's look at this example to see how these gestures are used. Um, and this is a very relatable example. Um, here's a graduate student working on a deadline. He's covered in a storm of papers. Um, I think it's relatable to others as well. Um, so the first thing the animator does, he positions a special emitter object in the scene and uses a water drop as the particle to make it rain over the poor student. Then he changes his mind and uses a pa paper airplane instead, uh, which I think makes more sense in this scene. To add some more drama, he changes the shape of the emission cone um, to make it more like a funnel. And then he uses a noise gesture to add some randomness. And finally, a spiral motion gesture to create the intended tornado effect. And there you have it, uh, the intended result. Graduate student covered in papers. All right, so we've seen now what the prototype looks like and how we utilized our design guidelines to build it. We tested the system ourselves and with a few users uh, in, an infor in an informal freeform scenarios. Let's look at some of the resulting animations uh, built using magical hands. Um, we created this waterfall scene, which shows a use case in education. Uh, and you can see that our directed particle systems really form the heart of this animation. You can see the clouds and the rainfall. And if you squint really hard, you can probably see the whale's water spout on the top right. This is a simple scene created by one of our participants. I think what's happening here is that this devil-like ball caused the airplane to crash, and now it's jumping with joy. Um, but notice the use of the particle emitter to create the fire, which really accentuates the scene. Um, here, we have used three collocated particle emitters for the bubble emission. The duck's path was created using a direct manipulation, and the keyframe and rotation was keyframe. And note that the control of particle systems is clearly very important to show the intended effect here. And this is a more complex scene created by a participant. The wizard tells a scary story, which scares the little ball, causing it to hide behind its father. And then there's a ghost uh, that appears who was hiding in the tree. Notice the subtle randomness, though, in the fire, campfire, and the zigzag shape of the emission, both of which were delib deliberately set by the user. And by the way, all of these animations took between 5 and 30 minutes, which includes time for arranging the scene, experimentation, and authoring the actual motion. However, the geometry is important, and we do not, do not have tools for creating geometry. And we're pretty happy with our prototype tool and all the results that we were able to generate with it, but there's lots of interesting avenues for future work. One potential UI exploration, which came up a lot during our study, was the notion of interacting directly with the gestures. Imagine that you've used a gesture to create a path, and now you use that gesture itself as an object which you can directly manipulate. Another de design guideline, which we didn't get to explore yet, was the, was the use of uh, same gesture for course to find editing. Imagine using this gesture the, for the emitter to define the path, the, the speed, and the spread to begin with, but later in the workflow when the user is uh, making finer edits, it can be contextualized to only edit the emission spread. Um, sorry, the last one. And another uh, very cool technical and UI challenge is incorporating gestures with defined um, direct motions as well as physical forces. So how do you tell a user what's possible or not? How do you enable downstream editing when combining both of these together? At a higher level, I imagine using mid-air gestures for more creative tasks. Personally, I'm most interested in visual tasks such as 3D modeling and sculpting, but maybe non-visual tasks such as the creation and editing of spatial audio or music could benefit from expressive hand gestures as well. Think about something like playing a theremin. In the end, I would like to acknowledge the contributions of Seth Walker from Adobe, our participants and uh, reviewers, and the artists who provided all the nice models which we use for creating the animations. Um, and that's all. The code for the prototype is now available, and an executable is available as well. So please download, give it a try, and see if you like it. We're open to feedback. And I'll end with that. Uh, thanks a lot for your attention.
lecture hall. We have time for questions? Hi, thank you for your talk. So, uh, did you measure the dis discoverability of the gestures? So, the feminists of the authoring process, does it contain the learning process? And how do you introduce the gestures to the, to the users? Thank you. Um, we, we did not explicitly measure the discoverability, uh, but uh, something that we observed, which I talked about a little bit, is these, uh, this notion of contextual gesture, which I think can really help with the discovery, with, sorry, well, that's for recognition. Um, no, we did not test for the discoverability. Yeah. OK, let's thank the speaker again. Is everybody